guys welcome back to my channel and i'm back with this board with this marker and in this house along with my kdd which is dead but anyways i'm here to teach you something interesting which i really wanted to teach people since a while and this video is really special because this is probably my last video in this house and and i'm gonna have fun with it just the way i used to do when i first made this channel <laughs> Do you guys know what angina is? I'm pretty sure you've heard of that term. Angina is a sort of pain. It is a precursor for myocardial infarction or heart attack. Angina pain is usually caused due to the same causes that lead to a heart attack. So it usually happens because there is an imbalance in the oxygen demand of the heart versus its supply. So you know that heart receives its uh, oxygen from what you know as coronary circulation. Right. Now, this is the heart, just imagine, and these are the vessels of the coronary circulation that provide oxygen to the heart. Imagine if there is any kind of plague or atheroma here, you can refer to the video that I posted before about atherosclerosis, which reduces the amount of oxygen that the heart is receiving and the heart fails to pump effectively. This causes ischemia or lack of oxygen that leads to secretion of several substances that generate pain like substance P, bradykinins, etc. These coronary vessels, normally they may be fine, but in acts of stress or emotion or exercise, the demand on heart increases, the oxygen demand of the heart increases because it needs to pump more blood. In such scenario, the effect of this blockage in the coronary system is heightened, which is why you get a certain kind of pain known as angina right and they usually call it angina pectoris too right and when you get this sudden attack of angina you use a particular drug known as nitrates which is a broad class of drugs in which the most famous one is glyceryl trinitrate and i'm going to tell you how this drug exactly works in relieving this situation and i'm also going to tell you about how you exactly have to use it in case I'm hoping you never get an attack of angina, but just in case, just for knowledge, it helps. Now first, I'll explain its actions followed by the mechanism of its action. Okay, so we read this under three subheadings. Number one is reduction in preload. So let me explain what preload is. So you know that veins are the ones that carry blood to the heart. Now, what these nitrates cause is dilation of these veins. And they go against gravity, as you know. So when these veins dilate, the amount of blood that is actually reaching the heart decreases. So the amount by which the right ventricle expands decreases. When this ventricular compartment expands, the tension or the force that it requires to pump this extra blood consumes a lot of oxygen. Now when the amount of blood entering this is less, it expands lesser and hence consumes lesser oxygen to pump whatever blood is there. And this is how the most important action of nitrates takes place. Preload reduction. Now the second thing is reduction in afterload. So afterload is basically, suppose this is the aorta, right? So the peripheral arteries are also dilated in nature because of these nitrates. Now, how does this help? So if you assume a certain amount of pressure exists within these arteries and the heart has to pump against the amount of pressure that is existing, right? Now, imagine this pressure reduces. That means the heart does not have to pump with that much efficacy or that much force in order to counteract this pressure. So reduction in this pressure will reduce the force that the heart needs to exert in order to pump the blood in its left ventricle. Okay, but mostly nitrates have a effect on preload. Now the third action is a little complicated, but I'll tell you, which is redistribution of coronary flow. I'm sorry for my sloppy handwriting, but this horizontal, sorry, vertical wall is not helping. What I mean by favorable redistribution is, for example, this is one of the main coronary vessels and these are the arterioles that come out of it. 
Now, I will tell you a small property of these arterioles, right? They can auto-regulate their diameter based on the availability of oxygen, carbon dioxide, etc. So, when there is less oxygen availability, they automatically vasodilate their vessels, causing increased blood flow, that is, increase their diameter. And this auto-regulation is not possible by the main coronary vessels, but it is possible to a certain extent, but it's mostly exerted in the arterioles, right? Keeping this concept in mind, let us see, for example, there is a block here, right? If there's a block here during an anginal attack, you will notice that this area will undergo hypoxia or ischemia, right? So what happens in favorable redistribution is nitrates help in the dilatation or increase in diameter of these big vessels. Okay, when these big vessels increase in diameter, automatically the blood flow to these small vessels also increases. But now why is it favorable? That is because auto-regulation of this ischemic area happens and these arterioles also dilate. But at the same time, the arteriole that is present right before this block does not undergo auto-regulation and remains the same in diameter. So, the redistribution of blood flow is to this ischemic area and these arterioles. That's the basic concept. Now, let us move on to the mechanism of action of this. Okay, so the concept is that, you know that all these vessel walls are made up of smooth muscles, no? Now, imagine these smooth muscles relax instead of contracting. Obviously, there is increase in diameter because the muscle cells are not contracting and they are not decreasing the size of the vessel, right? So, these vasodilators or these nitrates act on the smooth muscle cells of vessels. So, assuming this is a smooth muscle cell, there is an entire pathway that you must know which helps in the contraction of smooth muscle cells. These nitrates, they attach to a receptor and enter the cell. Wherein this nitrate is converted to nitric oxide by many mitochondrial acetaldehyde dehydrogenases, etc. Right, nitric oxide is a free radical, okay, it's a very reactive species. This nitric oxide, what it does is converts GTP into CGMP by the help of this enzyme known as guanylin cyclase, right? Now this CGMP, when it increases in the cell, causes the expression of a protein kinase. This protein kinase, on the other hand, helps in the dephosphorylation of myosin light chain kinase. When myosin light chain kinase is dephosphorylated, there is no production of active myosin filaments. When active myosin filaments are not produced, the actin filaments, actin, not active, actin filaments cannot bind to this. And when actin and myosin can't bind together, there is no muscle contraction. For this, you need to watch another video on muscle. You know what? I'm going to link all these videos in my description. Muscle contraction and the process of how that happens. Oh, another thing that nitrates do is uh, prevent the entry of calcium ions into the cell. And as you know, calcium is pretty essential for the contraction of smooth muscle. Anywho, this is the mechanism of action. I hope you understood this. Before we go into how it's used, uh, Every drug that you see has a set of adverse effects that it comes with when used in a dose more than its pharmacological significance. I would like you to sit and brainstorm what could the adverse effects of this drug be corresponded to its functions, okay? As you know, let's talk about one important adverse effect. So this causes vasodilation. And when there is vasodilation, there is decrease in blood pressure. When there is decrease in blood pressure, the receptors around the body which detect the blood pressure are activated, which cause reactive tachycardia, that is increase in heart rate in order to increase the cardiac output of the heart and restore the blood pressure to normal. So when this happens, you can have symptoms such as palpitations, 
flushing etc palpitation is when you can feel your own heartbeat and since bp is reducing there is also postural hypotension involved which basically means you may faint or you may feel dizzy uh, and since there is vasodilation also happening to the vessels around the body there is a high chance that you may develop a, some sort of headache which can easily be relieved by paracetamol etc uh, another thing that this causes is methemoglobinemia which means there is increased amount of abnormal hemoglobin in the body and this is somehow helpful in cyanide poisoning the details of which we'll get into at some later video these are the major adverse effects that you have to remember and there are two very important properties of nitrates number one is dependence and the other one is tolerance so tolerance to nitrates develops very easily that means when you consume nitrates or when it is infused in your body via a transdermal patch etc its effect starts weaning off after a period of probably 6 to 8 hours and this has a lot of theories for example the enzyme that is required to convert uh, the nitrate to nitric oxide reduces due to the free radicals produced etc etc the point is tolerance to nitrates develops very easily which is why you need to give your body a break whenever you're taking a 24 hour nitrate supply by removing the nitrate patch for at least 8 to 10 hours every day the other thing is dependence whenever you're taking nitrates you should ensure that you don't suddenly get off nitrates when you suddenly get off nitrates it may precipitate a sudden acute attack of angina which leads to heart attack and probably even death uh, the reasons for this are exactly not known but all i have to say is if you're trying to get off nitrates then do it slowly and gradually instead of suddenly one day deciding to not take nitrates ever again right so now we're done with the major properties let me tell you how you use nitrates suppose imagine a 55 year old man is exercising on the treadmill and this is an activity that induces stress right and it increases the burden on your heart and he suddenly faces this excruciating pain what is he supposed to do his doctor has prescribed him glycerol trinitrate sublingual tablets sublingual is when you put it under your tongue or lingual right so what he does is he takes one tablet from this glass bottle dart bottle and he puts it under his tongue and waits for 5 minutes if the pain is relieved he spits out the tablet but now if the pain is not relieved he takes another tablet after 5 minutes suppose he's done this for 15 minutes and his pain is not relieving he's taken more than two tablets he's taken three tablets what is he supposed to do now he needs to call the ambulance and go to the hospital because if it is not reducing after three doses then you might need an iv infusion of certain drugs like nitrates etc how this exactly works is these tablets these nitrate tablets are put under the tongue now the mucosa under the tongue is very thin so these drugs get very easily absorbed into the systemic circulation and its actions can show within a span of 3 uh, minutes there are other methods too for example if you have been diagnosed with chronic angina and you keep getting anginal attacks you have transdermal patches that is patches that you can put on your skin or buccal patches that you can put inside your buccal mucosa inside your i mean mouth mucosa which slowly release some some amount of nitrates every day but the most effective way to get rid of an acute anginal attack is taking a sublingual tablet but make sure that as soon as your pain is relieved you spit out the tablet otherwise you know what it will lead to these adverse effects anyways that was the class i hope you really liked it i feel if i had more time to actually teach you guys i would love to expand upon serious pharmacology because it's beautiful If you guys want to learn anything more from the medical curriculum or anything in general do write it down in the comments because I am feeling very teachy nowadays. And as I was saying this might be my last video in this house since uh, my family is shifting back to India. So I'm going to really miss this place so I'm having like one last trip here basically revisiting the time when I first started making YouTube videos with this board. Anyways that was me I will see you guys in my next video. I was thinking of vlogging our academic conference. Let me know what you think about that. 
Uh, anyways, that's it. I have said the word anyways multiple times. I will see you guys. Bye-bye.